G'day fellas and welcome back to another casted game spawning in over on the east side of the map. It is Beastie QT. Gonna be playing a little bit of the French for us today. His opponent who spawns on the opposite side of the map. It is Kelazur and he is gonna be playing the Rus for us today. So these two players are currently playing in a show match. If you've watched the first game, uh, then you'll probably be familiar with what I'm about to tell you, but I'll just reiterate it for anybody who's not. This is part of Lidacore's show match. So if you're unfamiliar with Lidacore, I'll leave a link in the description. He's a fellow caster. So he cast Genesis uh, with me, the official Age of Empires for uh, Genesis tournament, the $20,000 tournament hosted by EGC TV. Uh, that was him. So make sure you go uh, head over to his channel. Check out him out if you're interested in seeing more casted games uh, at the top level because he definitely provides a lot of it. In addition to that, we've got both of these players. They are streaming on Twitch. So if you'd like to check them out, links in the description. Uh, Beastie's actually got a pretty decent YouTube as well. So make sure you check him out. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, he's an absolute beast, uh, as the name suggests. But let's talk a little bit about what we are expecting to happen in this game. So we've got... Kalazor on the Mong on the Mongols on the Rus and uh, his opponent Beastie going to be playing the French here. Now both players are well we, we are playing on the map. Uh, I want to say Highview. I, I always get confused between Highview and Lipany. Uh, Lipany is the one with no stealth forests. Highview is the one with lots of stealth forests. So we can see this one has got a lot of stealth forests. Uh, so Rus is definitely going to be a very strong sieve on this map just because of the fact that there are so many wolves that spawn. So uh, if we can find them. All right, there's one. He's managed to find one. So on, on this map, there's a lot of wolves that spawn for whatever reason. I don't know exactly why that is. Uh, it, it must... It's it's just... It's the way that things are on this map. Um, so the, there's just more wolf spawns. And so as a... Oh, yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> there's a few wolves right there. So this is 100 gold for a Rus player. Now, the reason why Beastie is luring it because he's denying that gold from his enemy. Obviously, if his enemy got, these, uh, got a hold of these wolves, he could do the same thing, luring it to the town center. So one of the things to be cognizant of... Uh, throughout the game is making sure that you deny your enemy uh, from having that. So that, that can mean things like killing the huntable boars that are out in the middle of the map and obviously denying the deer as well because the deer are out here. You can see there are a couple more uh, wolves out here as well. So a lot of uh, a lot of Gaia out on this map and that's why Rus are so strong on it. Now at the moment, the Rus are quite a strong civilization. Uh, people suggest that they are probably the best civilization at the moment up there with Mongols. Uh, I tend to agree with that. I think that they are very, very good. Um, but at the same time, I do think that they have weaknesses. So uh, we have seen that uh, English are quite a good civilization uh, when it comes to dealing with the Rus, just because of the way that the interaction works. Oh, look at this. He's going to be able to pick up a wolf here. Very cheeky. So steals the aggro. And once you steal the aggro on the wolf, the wolf is just going to follow you all the way home. At least it should follow you all the way home. Sometimes it can, sometimes it can get a little bit distracted, but... Uh, Yes, going to be able to follow him all the way home. So managing to, to get all of these seven deer, but at the same time losing that. And that's that's 25 gold. So that, that's really significant, the fact that he was able to pull that. But you can see that the leash on that boar has run out. So keep in mind, it's kind of like if you've ever played an MMO and, you know, there's there's a concept of aggro and like a leash range. And like this is this has got a leash range on that as well. It, it works out to be about, a, a, you know, a, the full line of sight of a scout is essentially what it is. Players now aging up. So got the golden gate going down. We hear a scout screaming off in the distance, spotting out another enemy scout over here. Uh, and uh, golden gate going to be going up. So players looking to age up pretty early here. So this is about standard what you'd expect. Uh, so we will be seeing professional scout wars undoubtedly uh, as they come out. School of Cavalry a little bit delayed here. Only three villages on this. I ideally, I'd like to see about five or six villages on this, but it can be tough because you do have to work out the macro. You can see a, a villager now moving over towards this. So going to be able to get it up a little bit faster. Uh, but keep in mind, French is going to be a little bit more delayed than uh, Rus when it comes to this professional scouts. You can see professional scouts going to be coming in very, very shortly here. Uh, as it gets dropped off, there it is now coming in. Kelazur gets that nice and early. He's sitting on 280 bounty as well, so a very nice tier 2 bounty already in the game. 4 minutes and 22 seconds. Finds another wolf up towards the base of Beastie as well. Another sheep up here as well, so a lot of Gaia out on the map for him. He's going to be really happy with how this map has gone for him. Uh, and now we'll take a look at how many scouts he's got. So he's got one scout. I'm going to shift click, and that's two scouts, three scouts, four scouts. 
I think he's only got four scouts out at the moment. Now, that's that's not too bad considering your enemy hasn't even aged up yet. This is a really late age up for Beastie at this point. He's going to begin training scouts himself. We're going to spot that he's going to get the professional scout straight away. But keep in mind, he, he's behind at this point because his enemy, he's already halfway through his professional scouts. He's got 30 seconds left on that bad boy. So he's already spent 45 seconds researching that. So Kelazu is going to have a significant advantage when it comes to the stealing of the sheep the stealing of the sheep the stealing of the deer uh and you can see that he's uh moved each individual scout onto those uh deer carcasses and now we've got a scout coming out looking to get into the f get into the action get into the fray uh but uh Kelazor gonna obviously deny that one gonna begin splitting these up now i'm curious to see if he's gonna do any naughty shenanigans I, as, as i like to call them that's where you pick all of these up you can see one two three four there he goes all right, four. No, he's not going to do it. Looks like he's just going to run back. So one of the things that you can do is you can just uh, put them all up in a, in a forest or, or put them under a tree, and they're really hard to spot. So if you put all of the deer like on the other side of that tree, just like that, if you just put them down right there, they're so hard to see through the tree. Uh, so that is one of the things that you can do. Uh, stack all the carcasses on top of each other and then go pick up the other carcasses that were left there. And then you can always come back because your enemy doesn't know where they are. They could be anywhere. They could they could be in your base. They could be in your enemy's base. So now Kelazo going to be running back towards his own base. And you can see all of the villagers straight away coming towards these, wanting to pick those up because they do have a faster gather rate. We'll take a look now over at Beastie's perspective as his professional scouts have come in. And uh, I guess now now that we've got this new patch that's come in, Springwoods have been nerfed. Let's talk about what needs nerfing next. Professional scouts. Um, <laughs> that's at the top of my list at the moment. So some ideas have been thrown around already. Uh, the first idea that's been thrown around is give it like a little bit of time. So you watch these scouts come out, okay? Instantly pick it up and instantly run away. So give it like a little bit of a, a, a little bit of time on that so make it so that it you can actually see beastie up here looking remember i i mentioned earlier about that so the trick to finding it is you actually oh he's just heading up to the second one don't worry uh the, the trick to actually finding it is to just drag box so if you drag box and you select a deer it will actually tell you if you've selected a deer so you can just come in and if you select like that and you, you spot oh there's the deer then you can rotate the camera and then ah there you are you cheeky bunker um so th that is one of the things to to note walling now on the uh on the relic very very nice from beastie um but yeah i, I think that like the, the first option for me for professional scouts would be like um making it so that there's a little bit of a time frame for picking up the professional or the the scout itself or pick, picking up the deer carcass so you can see here's some deer carcasses watch how fast these guys pick it up so they're just going to tap it there it goes uh so that's the first thing and then the second thing is when they're carrying a deer carcass so you can see it's 1.62 tiles uh of movement speed so when when they're carrying the deer carcass reduce that from 1.62 make it like 1. 6, I don't know, so, something like that. Like, not not too crazy. Probably shouldn't be like that. And then maybe like 1.4 or something like... Just, just reduce it down a little bit. Make it uh, so that they're able to be caught by, at the very least, you know, knights or, or horsemen. And technically, they can be caught by horsemen. But if you've ever seen a horseman trying to kill a scout, I think the, ha the scout regens the health faster than the horseman can hit it. Uh, so it is something to be very uh, cognizant of. Guildhall now going to be going up for Beastie Kellazor, aging up at eight minutes. Jeez Louise, that is a quick, fast castle time if I've ever seen one. That is one of the quickest castle times I think I've ever seen coming out here. Very, very nice time for him. Going to be going straight into the Warrior Monk. I kind of wish I'd been paying a little bit more attention to Kellazor. I would have loved to have seen exactly what he was doing in his build order. Triple archery range already going down for him. Going to be playing into the Mongols, or into the Mongols, into the uh, into the French here. So I'm curious what kind of composition we're going to be seeing out of Beastie. Uh, I would expect that we would probably see into this, probably Knights makes the most sense, going like Royal Knights. But at the same time, once your enemy hits critical mass, it just becomes a pain trying to kite that. So I don't know whether we're going to see Knights, whether we'll see Archers, it, 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 maybe even mangonels potentially we might see that obviously in the the mangonel or the, the recent uh nerf to springholds actually hit the roofs the the hardest out of any civilization because one of the things to note okay so you've got so it hit four civs really hard the abbasids the mongols the chinese and the rus so all of these civs get bonuses some way to their to their springholds um, but in my opinion, the Rus got hit the hardest because they actually, if they want to go into Springwoods, they actually have to make, um, they have to make their siege workshop. Whereas the other civilizations don't. Uh, now going to be falling back. A lot of scouts, horse archers coming out. So scouts getting in on the action. 
We'll take a look over at the base of Kalazor and see what he's up to. He doesn't have a blacksmith down just yet, but you wouldn't expect it to be down this early. We've got the horse archers being rallied towards the front. Uh, and so for this game, I'm expecting that we're just going to be seeing a whole bunch of a, a scout mass uh, together with horse archers. That's essentially what it's going to be. Nothing else too complicated. Uh, house coming down. So a little bit of an oversight here. Going to get housed, supply blocked, as the StarCraft 2 players would call it, uh, just for a little bit of a time. And now the horse archers begin to move out. Beastie obviously hitting the next age, going up with the guild hall. Going to be moving his a guild hall over to gold. You can see it's on the first tick right now. And putting down an outpost early. So is he looking to play this a little bit more defensive than his opponent? That is probably one of the options. Uh, a couple of royal knights moving in and looking to get in on the wood line. Going to be able to idle up a few villagers here. They're going to be able to come in. First villager does go down. You can see that they've got some pretty decent armor here. Uh, tanking a lot of damage. Scout's going to come up and siege down this wall so that they're able to access through to that relic. Do we actually have a monastery coming out? I don't think we've got a monastery coming out for beastie at this point so i don't even think he's looking to contest the relics i think he's just looking to delay them uh but now gonna be denying out plenty of those uh of those horse archers as they did try and come in so beastie doing a good job of holding on at this point in time and uh and now this palisade wall gonna be going down very slowly but hey you know what slow and steady wins the race Mo warrior monk gonna be coming up now looking to secure this relic where are the rest of the relics on the map holy shit has has he taken all of the relics already there's three there's two three in there fourth one's gonna be taken right here and the fifth one's back over here which has been walled in already now does kelazor know about that he does know about this relic so he he probably will be over here sooner uh rather than later i would expect that's probably going to be the the next point that he pushes probably going to be looking to secure up these sacred sites as well because he does have map control playing as the Rus, you get a, a huge mass of these horse archers out so quickly uh, and you're able to take map control uh, from the essentially for the entirety of the game until either you lose or until uh, until you win uh, th that is essentially it monastery now going to be going down to fit in these extra uh these extra relics so the abbey of the trinity can only hold three uh, so the monastery is going to be providing that extra space and now we see the scouts heading over towards the palisade walls and going to be looking to siege it down knight upgrade actually coming in for kelazor at this point so he's gone into stables i this i i am genuinely surprised at this i did not expect that at all uh, horse archers now coming in you can see the villagers managing to escape uh, and and falling back and there's still there's five scouts sitting inside that outpost so a very nice use of the scouts there uh, for those uh, for that outpost and now taking a sacred site in the meantime this is so smart by Kelazor. so obviously he needs his warrior monk up here to come and claim this relic but in the meantime hey might as well grab the sacred site just grab that nice little trickle scouts are going to be forced back though because obviously uh Kelazor has moved his horse archers away from here so this is only going to delay him further he's probably going to be able to come up towards his sacred site as well and deny that if he wanted to um, but towards the base of Beastie, he's got more harassment that is coming in. Sacred sites are going all over the map. So first one goes up towards his base, second one going away from it. And now we've got villagers that are going to be going down. So we saw wood villagers going down on the other side of the map. Now we've got wood villagers going down over here. Looks like he's cashed out his uh, guild hall quite recently. So I don't know whether that's a mistake or whether that is... Uh, I mean, obvi obviously it was intentional for him to do it, but it always makes sense to leave it for a little bit longer. You know, I guess I think that's maybe the problem with the guild hall. You always just want to leave it for a little bit longer, don't you? And so it's like, at what point is it reasonable to take it out? You know, is, is 200 gold reasonable to take it out? Probably, probably not. I don't know. Uh, me personally, I'm a bit more greedy. Horse art, or rather... Uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've lost it the warrior monk now going to be coming in and actually would have lost it anyway because the monk was too speedy for him manages to pick up i think this is the very last relic so we've got kalazor who sits with one two three four relics and now the fifth relic going to be coming back towards the base of beastie he's going to be very happy with that you know just just the one relic it's not too bad uh, horse archers, a lot of horse archers in this mass as well for Kelazor. And Beastie sort of scrambling at this point and just looking for an alternative source of resources. I'd, I'd love to see just a wall come in at the back here as well for him, just to prevent any passage coming through from that direction. You can see all the villagers moving over towards the new wood line. These guys are going to create an absolutely crazy amount of uh, surface area over here. We'll take a look how far they managed to spread out. You can see the way that they do, they like go like three to a tree and as a result, you get like these villagers that are just in no man's land gathering up wood when ideally you'd want them all over here. Uh, so that is one thing to note when you do sort of move all of those villages. More walls now coming up from Beastie at this point. A bit of a raid coming through as, as we suspected that raid was going to be coming through and a, a nice little engagement potentially here for Beastie as he looks to secure his enemy's army 
force them from coming out, but uh, down towards his, his base. We'll take a look over towards his base, uh, exactly what's happened, but uh, we don't actually have that wall coming through. Like I suggested, Beastie, you got to listen to me, man. you got to put that wall down, dude. That wall would have helped you out significantly there. would have prevented the loss from any uh, any units as well as uh, just denying the attack completely. But now we have that composition coming out, Archer and Knight. Uh, so it is, uh, it is the composition that he is elected to go for. And I, I think it's probably the right decision here. I'd love to see more archers coming out, but obviously keep in mind that with the archers, the way that they work against the horse archers, they do very well in the castle age, but move to the imperial age, it becomes a lot harder. Archers getting some great trades in there. Ve veteran royal knights managing to get the charges in as well. But now the majority of the sacred sites have gone over to his opponent. We've got wooden fortresses as well as a house out on the front line, because why the heck not? Sacred Sight over on the back line being taken up by Beastie. He said, you're not going to have that one for much longer, mate. And uh, he's going to be securing it up with a plethora of walls. And take a look at this. What, what do you think Beastie's trying to harness the uh, the energy of here? It kind of looks like... Yeah, do you guys know Futurama? Like, there, there, there was a character called... I think it was called Claws. He's like, let me give him the claws. And he's got, like, these little claws. Or, or clamps. Maybe it was clamps. I'm really tempted to Google it right now, but I don't want to derail, like, uh, the game. But, like, I'm pretty sure it was, like, clamps or claws. He's like, let me give him the clamps. Something like that. He's friends with Bendo. He's a little robot. But uh, it kind of looks like that's what he's harnessing right now uh, with, with the way that his relics... Or his relic wall has hit. But take a look at the mass that is beginning to build right now for Kelazor at this point. So scores very even. You know, I don't think you can get scores more even than that. They were a point apart at that point. So that is a, a pretty decent uh, game when it comes to how even they are. Second town center now getting added for Kelazor here. Now, keep in mind to stay ahead of the, the French player. He's going to have to add that. So that's almost a mandatory thing. 53 villagers for Kelazor. Beastie sitting on 57. So only a slight villager lead for him now. Uh, but a huge mass uh, beginning to build for Kelazor. We'll take a look at the military count. 39 for Kelazor. For Beastie sitting on 39 as well. But keep in mind, he's got a lot of archers in here. And horse archers are a lot uh, more effective than... Or population effective than those archers are. All right. So we'll take a look now towards the banks of his opponent. Uh, what's Kelazor adding in? He's got a lot of production here. So four stables, three archery ranges, and 20 idle villagers. That is a lot of idle villagers. Going to be capturing up this sacred site. I didn't even realize he'd lost this sacred site. Archers now looking to force an engagement here. Trying his best to fall back. A lot of those uh, knights moving in and out. Archers in the back line. A lot of Arbalest Trier in here as well. Great to see from him. He's going to be looking to focus down these horse archers. Managing to run past the lances and doing a great job of it. We see the Arbalest Trier just staying, standing on the back line. Archers moving up and focusing down those horse archers of his opponent. Do we have the Fortitude? Bo Boyar's Fortitude? No, we don't have the upgrade just yet. Despite the fight being brought on by Kelazor. So a little bit of a, an oversight there. Some people will often forget this uh, technology exists. Uh, but Beastie actually looking pretty... Pretty awesome uh, with that fight. So well played by him. We'll take a look over towards uh, the upgrades from here. So yeah, one of the upgrades that is missing. So we've got only plus one armor. That is the only upgrade for Kelazur. Just by being 18 minutes into this game. So typically for Rus players, by the way, I love it. This is some very long distance mining of the boar or long distance uh, gathering of this boar. Uh, but yeah, so typically for at about the 18 minute mark, I would expect to see a Rus player uh, with Boyar's Fortitude plus two and then probably like plus one in in the attack or you know plus one in defense plus two in attack something like that like it, it, that is it is a significant uh lack of upgrades there so hopefully he's going to be able to make that work but now an attack move up towards the north does a great job finds the first uh, of the royal knights going to be able to pick up the second one here probably as well we see that the lances with their joust out or their knights with their joust out Going to be able to, to deal with this pretty effectively. And the horse archers get off their final volley. Looks like it's going to go down. And they managed to deal with that very effectively. Second hunting cabin going to be going up here. So both of these hunting cabins doing a very effective job. Do I hear sprinkles? I think I just heard a sprinkled. Ah, it's a sprinkled tower. That's what I heard from the wooden fortress. So the sprinkled tower from the wooden fortress. Do not worry. The, the sprinkled tower is still viable. You can, you can still go for a Springled Tower. You just can't go Springled anymore. They're, they they nerfed the Springleds, not the Springled Towers. Actually, what's the Springled Tower? Yeah, it's, it's still 60. Hey, 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 guys. They, they didn't nerf the Springled Tower. We can still spam Springled Towers. We just can't spam Springles. That's, that's okay. Town Center going to be going down now for Beastie. So keep in mind, he's on 66 villages. Uh, he's opponent on 70. 
Uh, now, Beastie's going to be adding that second TC. Keep in mind, he creates villages a lot faster than his enemy. A significant mass here of infantry. When I see this mass of infantry, I really start to think about, ooh, maybe I could make a mangonel. Maybe I can make two mangonels here. Uh, and maybe Kelazor is going to be thinking that same thing. Wall going to be coming up. Nice little quick wall here from Beastie on the back line. Probably going to be able to get that up and manages to get it up before his enemy is able to run through. A lot of farms out here. Not a lot of mills. And going to be able to take down the majority of those forces. And we've got arrows flying out everywhere in all directions at this point as Kelazor tries his best to force the fight. But uh, doesn't find anything. No Boyar's Fortitude coming through just yet. 11 idols right now for him. We'll take a look and see what upgrades we've got. Still no upgrades coming through yet for Kelazor. Oh, he's doing me crazy. If he somehow manages to win this game with no upgrades, I'm going to be shaking in my boots. I'm going to be eating my shoes. What? Wait, why are all those sayings about shoes, footwear of some sort? Curious. Curious. Uh, we've got this now going to be going down. On the back line, the scout going to be coming over here. So annoying as well. So the, the only way... So you can actually neutralize this by just bringing a villager over. Or just, well, just like bring two villagers over and just right click the scout. You'll be fine. It, you'll, you'll maintain the control of the sacred site. Because uh, all you need, when this sacred site is dripping like this, like you can see the way that it is slowly being neutralized, you just put one unit in here and it's going to keep it alive. Uh, the, the trick is though, you need to have the unit inside the circle. It, that actually brought the units out. Very nice. So that, that will, that'll be, that'll be fine for him. Uh, we'll take a look now at Kelazor. I want to see if we've got any siege workshop coming in just yet. Still don't have a siege workshop coming in yet. He's not going to need to add it at this point, but going to be dropping down that castle or keep on the front line. Uh, going to be keeping that sacred site safe uh, in addition to that wooden fortress. Do we have that boiling oil coming through and a sprinkled emplacement? Hopefully soon. Uh, those are two very important upgrades that you want to be getting on any castle, any keep. There's the boiling oil. Sprinkled emplacement going to be coming through very soon after that as well. He had 16 idols, but he's managed to find homes for them all afterwards. But uh, now we'll take a look back at Beastie's base and see what he's up to. The big beast... Adding in a stubble siege workshops. Beastie. Hey, Beastie. I'm just I'm just going to remind you gently, Beastie. They nerfed Springlords in the most recent patch. Watch. Watch what you're doing, man. Watch, <laughs> watch what you're doing. We've got ourselves a gate going to be combined with a mining camp as well. Scout on the back line. Going to continue screaming and hollering out saying, Yo, there's gold miners out here. There's, there's villagers just hanging out by a hunting cabin. Do something about it. Can he spot that, actually? He can. It's got a lot of... That hunting cabin has got a lot of line of sight. What the hell? Do hunting cabins have line of sights? Line of sights. Do they... Can they... They. Oh my god, they can see through stealth forests. Oh my god. This whole time I've been making hunting cabins and they've been acting as outposts. Bit of a fight going to be happening now. Archer's standing on the back line. A huge mass here from... Uh, his opponent, Kelazor. Uh, Beastie going to be trying to hold on as he attempts to fall back towards that town center, coming up with a little bit of an aggressive castle here, and as a consequence, it looks like he's going to be losing the majority of his military forces. Continues to fall back. No scouts in the action at all at the moment, but a lot of lances out here. Majority of forces going to be going down for Beastie. He doesn't have a lot. I'm hoping that this is a mangonel that's coming out of here, because I feel like it's the only thing that could potentially even this up. All of the forces now for Beastie are going to be going down. He's still got this town center that's going to be here, so there's no siege that's in this military force for his opponent. I don't think there's going to be Springles coming out. Surely there's not going to be Springles coming out. It is indeed a Mangonel, so hopefully he can get off a dream shot in here. Go, Mangonel, do it. Go, Mangonel, do it. Yeah, it's a pretty decent shot there. I'd be happy with that one, but you can see how much damage these uh, these units are just doing to the Mangonel. So, obviously, you know, it pops out like that. It wasn't able to pop out on the back line. It has to pop out on the front line because that's the way things work. Town Center still managed to hold on, so... Look, he's not out of the woodwork just yet. Kelazor's still looking pretty strong at this point. We'll do a quick stock take and see where these players are up to. So Kelazor's sitting on 88 villagers at the moment. Beastie's sitting on 86. So villager counts are very even, but Beastie's going to be donating a couple villagers over here. They were standing idly by, but this castle, he's committing to it. He's trying his best to keep this position. Manganel going to be coming and finding uh, actually nothing. It fell short a little bit. So maybe the units, uh, the way that they... Maybe they were moving forward and the... Mangonel fired and they stood still. I think that might be what happened. Keep trying to get up here. Uh, now, we'll take a look from Kelazor's perspective. Has he decided to add a siege workshop in response to this? Indeed, he has. He's got three siege workshops going up now. Uh, so, one, two, three. Uh, rallying them towards the front lines. Mangonel doing its best to try and stay alive. You can see it's got to slowly turn around and gets the shot off. It gets a pretty decent one off, but I think it might be a little bit too late right now for Beastie because the majority of his enemy is or enemy forces are in his base. 
Ma third mangonel going to be coming out, drying its luck. Now, keep in mind, if these mangonels had all been made together and had all fired off, this would have been a deadly force. But unfortunately, there's just too many knights here. It looks like Beastie actually going to be probably losing this game. This could be a Beastie loss right here. So, you know, who would have thought it? We've got, we've got rank 2 going up against rank 56. If you guys caught the first game, you would have seen Kelazor beating Beastie's Rus. And now the second game comes in and Kelazor's Rus beats Beastie. So Beastie is just, uh, I mean, at, at this point, he's not looking the best. We'll say that much. He needs to activate beast mode. I believe, Beastie, I believe. Uh, I don't believe too much longer for this game. That's 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 the bottom line. But, you know, for the next game, for the next game, Beastie, that maybe that's it. Castle getting cancelled uh, there from Beastie. At least I think it was cancelled. I don't think it was trebbed down. Yeah, I think it was cancelled there. Uh, Beastie probably going to be looking to add one on the back, I guess. But even at this point, I mean, there's just such a huge military mass out from his enemy. Look at the trab shot. The trab shot literally hit in the middle of all of these horse archers at this point. And Kelazor making short work of, of Beastie's eco economy as well as his military. He's got seven military units out right now, Beastie. He's going to have a difficult time. Oh, there it is. Ah, the awkward moment where you forget to withdraw the gold from the guild hall. Hopefully, hopefully he didn't remember at the end of the game because that would have been, that's, that's where you shake your head. GG gets called Beastie QT taps out. Guys, if you've enjoyed this cast, make sure you check out Lidacore. I'll leave a link in the description as well as links to both of these players so you can catch their games as well because they are on Twitch, they're on YouTube. Make sure you check them out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.